lane when I pass in the street. Bag of money in the passenger seat. Today, we're going to be jumping into one of the most important aspects of photography and videography, which is lighting. I'm down because the coast wrecking up the flame mouth. So high, might never come down. So now, when I first got into this craft, I thought it was all about having the most expensive camera and best lenses with the lowest apertures to get the highest quality of video. But in reality, you could be shooting on a GoPro or an Osmo or even an iPhone and get pretty similar quality as long as the lighting conditions are optimal. Now, lighting doesn't have to be overly complicated and it could honestly be pretty budget friendly if you know the vibe you're going for and the overall look you're trying to achieve. They also don't have to be big and bulky like this guy right here taking up half the room or a complete eyesore and inconvenience if you're going out into public doing a little photo shoot, worrying about a power source or taking a bunch of V-mount batteries, having a massive light drawing a bunch of attention. Trust me, there's a lot better options nowadays. Also, shout out to YouTube for sending me over this nice little neon light. It's not quite a plaque, we'll get there soon enough, but either way, it looks good on the desk. Now let's be honest, how many times have you clicked on a YouTube video and it looks something like this? What's up guys, today we're gonna to be talking about one of the most important things when it comes to then immediately click off of the video simply because it just doesn't look that professional. That's the difference between poor lighting and good lighting. Shit, sometimes I'll get sucked into a video just because the lighting is so damn good. I'll just kick back and admire how well they lit the scene or how cinematic their lighting was, maybe get some creative ideas for my own videos, but then again, I'm a sucker for some good lighting. Now let's go ahead and properly light the scene so you can see what a drastic difference lighting does to the overall appearance and vibes of your video. First, we're gonna add in a nice little, nice little key light here. Just gonna face it kind of at an angle right here, just like that. Then gonna add in nice little tube light. Got it on purple. I've been really liking purple lately. Just gonna place that right here just to give a nice little purple ambiance coming up. And then another little RGB light. Got it on, let's see, blue. Just to give it a little bit of contrast between the purple, kind of eliminate the bland whiteness of the wall. Just gonna kind of face it at the wall there. Now let's go ahead and reshoot that. What's up guys? Today we're gonna be talking about one of the most important things when it comes to photography and videography, and that is lighting. I mean, what a difference, right? Now, when it comes to spicing up your videos with lighting, all you really need is two main lights, one being a key light and the other being a RGB kind of colorful background practical light that adds a little ambiance to the overall video with some color and also creates a little background separation. Let there be light. There's also a few different lighting techniques that you should use because just talking directly in front of the light isn't that flattering either. Now for the first lighting technique and probably one of the most popular used within the industry for both cinematography and portrait photography is called Rembrandt lighting. This is where your light source is at a 45 degree angle from your subject, leaving one side of the face well lit while the other side has a little bit of shadow, giving it, giving it some nice contrast. It also gives you what they call the Rembrandt patch, which is an illuminated triangle triangle on the shadowed side of the face. Now this lighting was named after the famous Dutch painter Rembrandt because he would also mimic this lighting within his paintings, which is kind of interesting. Now this next lighting technique is for all you moody cinematic lovers out there. This vibe we got going right here is called side lighting. I know a little self-explanatory, but it's actually a really popular lighting technique used in both cinematography and portrait photography because it really sets a dramatic tone and gives the subject a good bit of depth for just an overall compelling image. Well, depending on the time, he may be in one spot or several. 
Now this is actually one of my favorite lighting techniques when it comes to shooting something a little cinematic, trying to dabble into some creativity, throw some side lighting up and you got yourself a scene. Add a little bit of practicals in the background, a little bit of color ambiance and you got yourself a vibe. Now for this last lighting technique, we're talking about overhead lighting. This lighting is used a lot in interview style slash documentary style slash talking head videos like this because it puts the main focus onto your subject, adds some good shadows, depth, and contrast, and just gives your video an overall professional look. Now, between those three lighting techniques, you should be able to find one that really fits the look you're going for, and I promise you they will elevate your video quality tenfold. Now, when it comes to key lights, there's a few options just depending on your budget and how much room you have for a lighting setup. For instance, this is my main key light here in the studio. It's the RC120B by Small Rig. It's basically a bicolor 120 watt cob light and fantastic light. But as you can see, it's big, it's bulky, it's heavy. You throw a soft box on it, takes up half the damn room, and it's not very inconspicuous if you're going out into public, and it's pretty inconvenient having to travel with this thing. But if you got a lot of space, you got a lot of room, you got the budget for it, I highly recommend this guy. Now, on the other hand, if you maybe you want to lower that budget a little bit, you don't have as much room, then I would highly recommend this little bitty workhorse. This is the Zion CX100, and it's a small 100 watt wireless, compact, lightweight, bi-color light that I've absolutely been loving. Zion reached out to me a week or two ago, asked if they could send me this thing to check out and get my thoughts. And to be honest with you, when it comes to lighting, I was always under the impression that, well, bigger is better, but this guy has definitely changed my mind. With it being so small, I'm able to throw it in different spots that I necessarily can't fit this guy. And it just allows me to be more creative with my lighting, which I've absolutely been loving. Now, this thing is tiny. You pop this cone off and you can slide it in your pocket if you want. Uh, you could throw this in your backpack, you could throw it in a sling bag, fuck, you could throw it on a lanyard and wear it as a damn necklace. This thing is so small, so convenient, especially for photo shoots or if you're just wanting to maybe shoot a little bit of video in public, you don't have this massive eyesore, everybody watching you. So highly recommend this guy if you know, you're just getting into lighting, you don't have a big budget, or you just want a nice portable light that will produce some power, the Zion CX100. Now, let's go ahead and talk about a few practical lights because you can have the best key light in the world, but if you don't have a little bit of ambiance going, going on behind you, then the, the vibes just aren't right. So let's talk about a few of the practicals. Now, when it comes to practical lighting, the options are pretty much endless for any budget. Just go on Amazon, search uh, modern desk light or RGB desk light or RGB tube light and voila, you, they're, they're all there. Everyone, you can't really go wrong with some good practicals, but figured I'd at least give some honorable mentions that I've been using that are tried and true. The first one being this tube light here. This is the Pseudophoto TP25 RGB. I've had this thing for like five years. It has been my go-to for photo shoots, for background ambiance, for just about everything where I wanna introduce a little bit of RGB light into the scene. Highly recommend. Now, another one that I've been playing with lately and 
I like it a lot more than I thought I would is the Zion 5-Ray M20C. This is a small, itty bitty, little 20 watt, full spectrum RGB light that comes with barn doors. It comes with a magnetic honeycomb. It comes with this cool little case that has a strong magnetic back that you could just pop right off, pull the light out, and it's literally itty bitty. But I've been using this a lot lately to create some good colorful ambiance in the background to really light up a wall with some blue. A lot of the video that you've seen today was shot with this using as the RGB in the background. So highly recommend this light. And honestly, if you get this guy paired with that CX100, your lighting setup is is complete that's all it's all you need what more do you want what more do you need that's it for the video today guys hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully you learned a little something about lighting and just just play play with the lights i've been playing with lighting a lot recently just trying to create some creative unique cinematic vibes and i've really been enjoying it so thought i'd make a quick little video on on lighting because when I first got into this content creation world, my lighting sucked and I didn't know why. I thought it was because I didn't have all the thousand dollar camera gear and thousands of dollars in lenses and all that stuff when really it was just lighting. So that's it guys. Appreciate you following along. You got any thoughts, comments, questions, queries, concerns, drop them below. I'll be sure to get back with you and I'll catch you on the next one. Later.